on July 1st, most women in Florida will not be able to get an abortion mm -hmm. after 15 weeks. Right. Yesterday, you said on day <coughs> one as governor, you will sign an executive order to protect a woman's right to choose. What do you believe is a reasonable time frame for restrictions on abortion, if any? Listen, I think the real question here is why is Ron DeSantis against a woman's right to choose? That's the real debate. And that's why I'm running for governor, is to make sure that we preserve a woman's right to choose, make decisions about her health, about her own body, and Governor DeSantis is opposed to that. And, you know, everybody has a right to their opinion on this issue, obviously, uh, but I think the vast majority of Floridians, men and women, frankly, believe in freedom and that women should have the opportunity to make their own decision about their body and about their health. Do you think there is any time frame that there should be a restriction, second well, trimester, third? I support Roe versus Wade, and, and you know, uh, unfortunately, the Supreme Court overturned it yesterday, and uh, that's a nightmare. I mean, I, I think it's outrageous. I, this is 2022, right, Liz? And it feels like it's 1952 or 1932. Uh, the Supreme Court has really taken us back. I mean, 50 years, Roe versus Wade was the law of the land, and they've just reversed it. And I think it's unconscionable that they're taking this kind of action. Uh, and I think it's going to make a big difference in these midterm elections. Has your stance ever changed on abortion over time? No, I've always been pro-choice. Uh, I believe, you know, listen, I was raised with three sisters. I'm an only son. I never had a choice on choice. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, uh, in my opinion, the right thing to do. Uh, everybody has a right to privacy in the Constitution, uh, both Florida Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. It should be upheld. I can't believe they overturned it. Um, but the fight's not over. And so when I get elected governor, God willing, uh, on the first day in office, I will sign an executive order that will protect a woman's right to choose. What is your message to parents in Florida? Parental rights should be paramount. I mean, you know, I've got great parents. My father, who's Charlie Crist Sr., I'm, I'm, he's the real Charlie Crist. I've uh, been a family doctor for 55 years here in St. Petersburg. and. I love him to death. My mother, Nancy, is an amazing woman, sweetest woman I've ever met in my life, sweetest person I've ever met in my life. And they raised me and my three sisters with such love and such caring, really instilled in us the kind of values that I hold dear, to treat people with respect, to be decent to others, to do unto others as you would have done unto you, which is the golden rule. And I wear these yellow wristbands every day, and it just says practice the golden rule every day. And that's what I believe in. And so parental rights, I think, are paramount. You're, so you're telling me parental rights are paramount. Very important, of course. And in some ways, Ron DeSantis would say the same thing. He talks about parental rights, yet he wants to step in the shoes of parents. I don't know if you saw the video that went viral where he was going up to do a press conference. There were students standing behind him, kids, high school kids. They were wearing masks, and this was when the pandemic was even higher than it is today. And he kind of dressed them down and stood in the role of their father. And I saw one of the fathers interviewed after that occurred, and he goes, what is up with Governor DeSantis? I mean, he's acting like he's the father of my child. I'm the father of my child. So he may say parental rights are important, but he wants to tell everybody what to do. School boards, county commissions, local mayors, preemption laws that will say that Tallahassee tells everybody what to do, like about wearing masks and what to teach and what books to ban. I mean, what's next, burning books? It's outrageous. Listen, I'm a Democrat running to protect democracy. Ron DeSantis is an autocrat running to have a dictatorship. And it's unconscionable to me. Florida is a much warmer state, a state that believes in democracy, uh, that every vote should count, and that the governor shouldn't be an autocrat. You were previously governor of Florida. You were elected as a Republican. Mm -hmm. Why did you switch parties? Well, let me say, I was a Republican because mom and dad were. It's the reason I'm a Methodist, too, because mom and dad are. Um, but the older I got and the more experience I had in politics, it really began when the Tea Party started to rise in the Republican Party, and then it continued to get even more right and harder right and harder right. Uh, and then, you know, it, it's gotten metastasized, in my view. Uh, and I don't mean all Republicans. I don't want to, to paint too broad a brush. Um, but the leadership of the Republican Party has gone off the cliff. And, and the best evidence of that are the members of the Supreme Court 
that were picked by Republican presidents and what they did with Roe versus Wade just the other day. Since Governor Ron DeSantis took office, the number of registered Republicans is <coughs> higher than the number of registered Democrats in the state of Florida for the first time ever. So they say. May I? Go ahead, you finish, I'm Can sorry. Can you beat Ron DeSantis? Oh God, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he's been a disaster as a governor from my point of view. I mean, I'm not running against him because I'm a fan, obviously. But you know, when you look at women's rights, he's off. You know, he doesn't respect women and their right to choose. When you look at African Americans and their right to vote or have congressional districts even, he wiped them out. There were two that were held by Val Demings and Al Lawson. He redrew them and eliminated those African American congressional districts, uh, making it harder for blacks to vote in our state. Uh, really not having drop boxes in minority communities uh, with a new uh, voting law, I call it non-voting law. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one group after LGBTQ, we haven't touched that yet. Uh, you know, I'm gonna be in a pride parade later and, and I think that it's so important to understand we're all children of God. And it seems like Governor DeSantis doesn't feel that way. He doesn't respect women, he doesn't respect African Americans, he's anti-LGBTQ and I mean, it goes on and on and on, and I believe everybody matters, and I believe everybody counts, and we should have a Florida for all. We're one of the most diverse states in America, and I think that's something we should celebrate, not castigate. Commissioner of Agriculture, Nikki Freed, she's the highest elected Democrat in the state. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the key differences between you and Ms. Freed, and what makes you the better candidate? There aren't that many differences. I really don't think so on issues. I, I think the big difference is experience. I mean, you said it earlier. I've already been governor. I know how to do this. I've also been Florida's attorney general. I know how to protect civil rights. I know how to protect voting rights. I've also been the commissioner of education, the last elected one, elected one in Florida. You know, I'm a public school kid. I care deeply about our teachers, about education in our state. I graduated from St. Petersburg High School. I graduated from Florida State University. So I believe in public education. I know how important it is. Two of my three sisters were public school teachers. And my dad that I referenced earlier was chairman of the Pinellas County School Board at one time. So it's in my DNA. Uh, I really believe in it. And I, I think it's important that we pursue it and fund it properly. If elected governor, yeah. um, what are your two biggest priorities? Well, I, I, it's hard to limit it, but voting probably would be number one. Um, voting and women's rights, because that's such an assault and a war on women right now in America and in Florida, thanks to the governor, um, that I think that's paramount. And, and as I mentioned, being raised with three sisters, it's always been important to me to have that kind of respect. And, uh, but voting rights is, is precious too. And I'm concerned about election integrity when I was in the state Senate years ago, I was chairman of the Senate Ethics and Elections Committee. And, you know, we've seen some odd elections in Florida over the years. And I think it's really important that we protect that right. It's precious, it should be cherished, that right to vote. And I served with John Lewis. John Lewis, who was an amazing civil rights icon from Georgia, used to always tell me, and any of my colleagues in the House of Representatives that would listen, he'd say, Charlie, your right to vote is precious. And he said, it's so precious, it's probably sacred. And I believe that because any issue that you care about, whether it's a woman's right to choose, protecting our environment, supporting public education, um, across the board, they all stem from that right to vote. Uh, so we have to be very, very, I think, vigilant about protecting that right. And the governor's trying to destroy it by making it harder to vote. Who wants to make it harder to vote in a democracy? His name's Ron DeSantis, and it breaks my heart. Even if you are elected governor, the state legislature is likely going to be majority Republican. Probably. So how do you <coughs> reach across the aisle, and can you give me an example of when you have in the past? Yeah, I do it all the time. You know, I'm sponsoring legislation in Congress with Republicans, and when I first got elected to Congress, that was 2016, uh, I had the honor and privilege of forming the Civility Caucus with a Republican member from Louisiana, Mike Johnson. And I think, you know, it's how you comport yourself and if you can lead by example. Uh, so how would I do that uh, when elected governor as a Democrat? I'm not so sure we're going to have Republican House or Republican Senate. It's possible and probable. Uh, so to accept your premise, I'll develop relationships and reach out to them. 
because I know this. I know there are moderate Republicans in the Florida House and the Florida Senate that are equally suppressed right now. They fear this governor, and that's tragic. That's tragic. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm just God-fearing. <laughs> and I think it's important that you develop relationships so you can build trust, you know, invite him over to the governor's mansion, which I prefer to call the people's house, um, and, you know, maybe have a glass of wine with him, share some experiences, find some common ground, and find out where we can work together for the betterment of the people of Florida rather than the parties of Florida. Let's talk about the pandemic for a second. Sure. Many states were shut down far longer than Florida. But when you do look at the COVID numbers, Florida numbers about the same as California and New York. Did Ron DeSantis get it wrong or right on COVID? I think the right question is, why don't we ask the members of the families of almost 80,000 Floridians that are dead? That's the only thing that really matters. And he failed us. He failed us. He never advocated strongly getting a vaccine, wearing a mask. In fact, he signs an executive order last July, essentially banning wearing of mask in our schools. I have a five-year-old niece who lives here in St. Petersburg. So last August is the first time she went to school. Nobody was wearing masks because Pinellas County didn't challenge the governor. And two days later, she's got COVID. She has a two-month-old sister, my two-month-old niece. She goes home at night, the older one, the five-year-old. Two days later, a two-month-old baby has COVID. These are the consequences of him being bravado and trying to be out-conservating, you know, uh, Trump or whoever might run in 2024. And I think that's what he's focused on but it's caused disease, it's caused death, and it's at his doorstep. Let's stay with Ron DeSantis for a second here because there sure. is chatter that he might run for president in 2024. Oh, I think he's definitely gonna do it. What are your political aspirations? To be governor of Florida, to fight for the people of this state. Because we have a governor right now that doesn't care about them in my view. What he cares about is his own political future. He cares more about the White House than he does your house. And the proof is in the pudding. Look at the special session they just did on property insurance. They didn't drop rates at all and admitted it. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. They're beholden to the insurance companies. When I was attorney general, I sued insurance companies. I fought against them for consumers of Florida because they weren't being treated fairly, just like consumers all across Tampa Bay and the Sunshine State are not being treated fair by property insurance companies right now. The cost is through the roof. Governor DeSantis is focused on the White House. And another issue, you look at the price of gas. I advocated to the governor that he should get rid of the gas tax in Florida. And if he would do that with the federal government, it would lower the price of gas at the pump by almost 50 cents a gallon. That would help people now. Well, he ended up passing something, but you don't get it till October. You don't get it till October. People are suffering right now. Where is he? Why isn't he helping us? That's why I'm running against him, to have a governor with a heart again for the people of this state. People are moving to Florida more than they ever have before. Oh, it's about what it was when I was governor, about a thousand people a day, about the same. And I think why they're moving here is because it's Florida. They weren't moving here when I was governor because of me. They're not moving here because Ron DeSantis is governor now. They're moving here because it's Florida. Florida's beautiful. I mean, you know, I think it's the most beautiful place on earth. Uh, we have great weather. Uh, we have great people. We're very diverse. Um, where else would you rather live than the Sunshine State? But I think it's gloomy under DeSantis' leadership. He's trying to divide us and he's tearing apart my state. And I want to bring the sunshine back to the Sunshine State. We ought to be happy people. We ought to have a governor who looks out for us and a governor who will have our back instead of Governor DeSantis having his own back trying to get to the White House. How are you in getting that voter turnout to win this race? By being honest with them. By telling them what my values are and what I believe in. And I get my values, as I mentioned earlier, from my upbringing, from my going to Sunday school, and from listening. My dad used to tell me and my three sisters, God gave you two ears and one mouth. It's amazing how much you can learn if you listen more than you talk. And I try to do that every single day. Listen to my fellow Floridians. Understand what their concerns are. Have empathy and compassion for them. And I think that's what they want in a governor. And this governor's gone AWOL. I mean, you know, he said, even after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, we got to go further in Florida and limit your rights even more. What in the world is that? 
that's a guy trying to get the Republican nomination in today's Republican Party for president in 24. But I'm going to defeat him in 22 and make Florida blue and make Florida happy again and make sure we have a governor who cares about the people first. What do you think is the biggest public misconception about you? I don't think there is one. I really don't. I mean, people know I've been a Republican, an independent, and a Democrat. I think they sort of understand the journey with the rise of the Tea Party and where the Republican Party went. I've always been a pretty down the middle guy. You know, we don't have a state income tax in Florida. You'll never have one while I'm governor. I want to keep your taxes low. I want to protect our environment because I know it's inextricably linked with our economy in Florida. It's why tourism is so great and provides all those jobs that people who work in hotels and restaurants. Uh, it's why as a member of Congress, uh, we provided PPE funding for restaurants, uh, billions of dollars. I know how important they are. And I just want to look out for folks. And uh, that's why I'm optimistic about this race.